Have you ever made a promise that you didn't keep? Hello, somebody. <laughs> and we had good intentions when we committed to that promise. I am so glad that God is not like us. I want to share with you for a few moments, and I said a few moments, we're not going to get out of here like 1130, okay? We're going to get out of here like at 11 o'clock. Praise the Lord, somebody. Yeah. I want to talk to you a few minutes about his great and precious promises. God never makes a promise that he does not keep. And any time that God gives you a promise, it's worth everything. It's worth our life and our death to hold on to. I want to talk to you about 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, four, four verses of Scripture. Aren't you glad it's not eight verses and I'm going verse by verse? 2 Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power his divine power has granted to all, though all, to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. He called us to his own glory and excellence. If you are a recipient of the Holy Spirit, that's a calling to gloriousness. The glory of God residing in these vessels of clay. How excellent is the Lord. Verse 4, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in this world because of sinful desire. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the word of God. I pray that it would rivet to your hearts. Verse 1, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Simon Peter. Simon Peter. Kind of rough around the edges. Kind of zealous. Prompt to do things that he felt. Whether they were right or whether they were wrong. God knew Peter's heart. Hallelujah. He knew his heart. Peter was the first one to declare, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, when asked by the Lord, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? You are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God, was Peter's response. Well, it was that same Peter that says, they may leave you, they may desert you, but I am your man. I'm going to be with you until the end. And we know what happened. It's the same Peter that denied or betrayed or, or, or that, that cowered down when the pressure was on. 
when he said he would stand and be with Christ, well, we know what happened. When one of the servant girls approached him and says, weren't you one of those that followed him? And he said, no. And he didn't say no one time. He said no three times. And then he swore just to kind of let people know that he was not identified with Christ who did not curse, who did not use foul language. Any time that we are associated with Christ, we do not have to yield to the flesh and to express ourselves by being profane, to make a point. All we have to do is just speak the truth. Amen, somebody. It was the same Simon that told the Lord that he would be with him. Jesus, loving him, forgave him, restored him, commissioned him, and filled him with the power of the Holy Spirit and told him to feed his sheep. The same Peter, the same man. Aren't you glad when you come to the realization that you need the Lord Jesus Christ in your life that he does not hold your sins against you? Hello, somebody. Jesus restored him because he knew his heart and he knew the potential of Peter once he was filled with the Spirit of God. Oh, glory to God. He knew what he was capable of doing. And God knows what each one of us are capable of doing when we have the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit within us. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can withstand opposition. I can withstand temptation. I can withstand the forces of evil against me because of the Spirit of God abiding in me. It is his words that addresses us today who have been justified by faith in believing the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ unto salvation. You see, it's not just enough, well, I believe Christ. It's believing in him and putting your faith in him and putting your trust in him and allowing him to have the reign and rule of your life. It does us no good to say, I believe in Christ and not be committed to Christ. It's like, I believe in my wife, but I'm not committed to my wife. That's nonsense. If you believe in someone, you commit yourself to someone. Isn't that right, Jim? <laughs> 70 years. Praise the Lord. It is the words that he's addressing us. Are you standing today in the faith of the righteousness of God in Christ, or are you standing in the unrighteousness of sinful men? The Bible says that there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end is the way of death. You can cut it, you can slice it, but it still comes out the same way. When you lean to this, you can get in trouble real quick. But when God is in your heart and you're being led by his spirit in your heart, you can always be representative of who he is and his goodness. Verse 2, that was Proverbs 14, 12 I gave you. Verse 2, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. He prays. Peter prays that grace when I think of grace, I automatically think of Jesus. 
and we define grace as unmerited. Did you merit Jesus? No, you did not. Neither did I. Jesus is the manifestation of God's grace to mankind. His amazing grace, his unmerited favor, which you and I can't earn by doing good works, by uh, doing good deeds. We cannot earn that. He is praying that the works that we do may be multiplied with his wisdom, with God's wisdom, because we will be under attack. And he wrote this to those that were scattered, those who were under persecution. He wrote these words. We are under persecution. We're living in a world that is turned upside down. Right is wrong and wrong is right. Hello, somebody. Every single day, it's put in our face to accept, to believe. Holy Spirit is going to further our knowledge of God through Christ as we study and learn his word while being guarded and directed and guided by the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit is to lead us into some truth. See, that is, what would you call it? An alternative truth. The Holy Spirit is not going to lead us into some truth. The Holy Spirit is going to lead us into all truth. Now when the truth comes, it's up to you to abide in it. Hello, somebody. We are people of truth. We live and we abide in truth because the Spirit of God is in what? Truth. He is in truth. He, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. On the contrary, there is another spirit in this world who is leading people to commit acts of violence, cruelty, maliciousness, debauchery, and murder. Is anybody out there alive who are witnesses to this? Well, there's some people alive here that are witnesses to this. Every single day, we are in conflict, saints. We're in a battle because we have been called by God to righteousness and to holy living, to being a reflection of Jesus Christ in this earth and not to compromise what we know is the truth. Peer pressure is a real thing. Hello. And our children and grandchildren are being driven to conform to peer pressure. And some of us young people in the audience are driven to conform to peer pressure. Hello, somebody. Am I talking to anybody? You aren't saying anything. <laughs> we have to stay centered in knowing the will of God, people, and being at peace with all men in Christ Jesus. We've got to be centered. We've got to be centered. There are things that will happen that come upon us all of a sudden to get our reaction. Hello? And if we're not careful, we will respond in a negative way. But we're peacemakers. Hello? We're children of God. Hello? We have the divine character of God residing in us. Hello. And we have to bring this flesh into the captivity of the will of God. 
On the contrary, we know that these things are happening in our world. Anyone who habitually lies, the truth is not in them, people. Hello, 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 hello. You see, because if we are walking with the Lord, if we are Christians, and the Holy Spirit has sealed us on the day that we confessed and invited Jesus Christ into our lives, truth came. The Spirit of truth came to reside in us. Now, we can claim something and not represent it. And a lot of people claim things and don't back it up. We're children of God, we're children of light, and we are of the day. Anyone who says that uh, they are abiding in truth and are not, they're liars. No matter how they dress it up, the serpent in the garden lied to Eve, you shall surely not die. Here we are dying. Hello. But he deceived her. Oh, you won't, you won't really die. You're gonna be like God, knowing good and evil. Isn't that wonderful? Having that knowledge? having that understanding and here we are verse 3 his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence I'm so glad that heaven awaits me hello Yes, my body is wearing down. Yes, your body is wearing down. And the promise that we have is that we're going to get a new one. You know, I, I see people leaping from their seats, rejoicing and shouting and saying, Praise God, I'm going to get rid of this old body. <laughs> I see that in the spirit, though I see that not presently. But the fact that God promises that we are going to be with him. Rebirth occurs as a born-again Christian, which is the only way that we can be a Christian, is that we be born again. Not that we were raised in a Christian family. We've got to be born again of, of the Spirit mainly and of the water at the moment when we fully accept by faith Jesus Christ as the Son of God and repent of our sins we then acquire a relationship with God he seals us with the Holy Spirit when we accept him that very moment that we say yes to Lord Romans 10 9 10 says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. Our faith is all in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Even if, if he died for our sins and he was buried and didn't get up, what hope would we have of life beyond the grave? He conquered the last enemy, death. And people are afraid of dying. Why? Because all they have learned to rely upon is their, their flesh. That's all they've learned to rely upon and that's all that they can relate to. But we know that God has given us his spirit for with the heart, verse 10, one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made known unto salvation. In your heart, you believe. With your mouth, you confess your belief. You do this all the time. Well, you say to one another, well, I believe. <laughs> and you confess with your lips, don't you, what you believe. And you're not shy about what you believe. But you boldly say, well, I believe. And you declare it. 
the same way that we declare Jesus Christ as the Lord of our lives. We boldly confess. We don't say, well, well, uh, yeah, uh, I'm a Christian. Yes, I, I, I love the Lord. When you know something and you believe something, you, you, you stand flat foot. And you say, hey, I believe thus and so forth. Amen? amen. Thank the Lord I get an amen for that. If Jesus is your personal Savior, you have eternal life, and that is glorious. Hallelujah, somebody. God has given every person an opportunity to have and live eternally without the curse of death. John 3, 16, 18, you know this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not, what? But what kind of life? What kind of life? Everlasting life. Now, I must admit, I don't want to live forever with these aches and pains. Hello. I don't want to live forever with the infirmities in my body. Hello, somebody. If God has promised me that I'm going to live eternally and I'm going to have a new body, sign me up. And I know I'm not the only one that's asking to be signed up. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And I'm closing, and you could say hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hurry up, pastor, finish. Here is the bottom line. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. 1 John 5, 12. You had better believe that. Verse 4. By which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. That divine nature represents the fruit of what? Fruit of Holy Spirit. That is the divine nature of God. We possess fruit of the Holy Spirit residing within us. We've got to walk in it. That relationship that we enjoy in Christ enables us to be pre recipients of his great and precious promises. We long to see people experience freedom from the forgiveness of sins and to be relieved from the heavy burdens of shame and guilt. We seek to do the will of God by refusing to give way to the world's view of sinful behavior as being acceptable to God. Hello? Anybody reading the paper these days? Anybody reading the word of God these days? We seek to do the will of God. That is our desire. When we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, According to his will, the desired results that we ask are received. Hello. Have you asked the Lord for something and it seems to be delayed? Hello. Let me tell you something. A promise, even though it's delayed, is still a promise. It may delay but it's still a promise that God commits to. So 
if it is in my lifetime that I see that promise come into fruition, that's wonderful. If it's not in my lifetime, I am still going to believe that the Father heard me. And according to his will, he does not desire that any should perish. So when we pray for our grandchildren, when we pray for our kids, and when we pray for family members, God hears your prayer and he is going to answer it one way or the other. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much in the sight of God. And if we pray knowing that he's not willing, he's not willing, son, that you die and go to hell. He's not willing, daughter, that you die and go to hell. And believe that and begin to say, oh, I see you with Jesus. What do you mean you see me with Jesus? Yeah, I see you with Jesus, daughter. Though you're rebelling, I see you with Jesus. You see, we have to call those things that are not as though they were. And not dwell in the negative. I'm talking to somebody. I don't know who, but maybe you. John 15, 7 says, If we abide in him and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. That's what Jesus said. That is a great and precious promise. When we live and walk in the Spirit, it is all about bringing glory to God in health and in sickness until death. We do our part. It is no longer our will that counts, but the will of him who saved us and set us apart. It's about doing the will of God. Are we going to struggle with that? Yes, we are. Are we going to be tempted to do otherwise? Yes, we are. But the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit within us is going to lead us into victory. He promised that he would never leave or forsake us. Death may take our loved one, but there is comfort. He is there to comfort us. He is there to protect us. He is there to provide for us. He is there to guide us. He is there to speak to us. For he is the lover of our souls, beloved. He loves us. There is nobody like Jesus. Hello. Do we look for another? No. There's nobody like Jesus. Some people wish that they could speak and say, thank you, Jesus, for loving me. They can't because their minds are gone. They're still there but their minds are gone. They have no recollection of what they have committed to because their minds are gone. But while we have our consciousness, while in this moment, we can say today, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Your application. The promises of God are worth holding on to because they never lose value. Your stocks and your bonds and your treasures, they will lose value over time. But Jesus, his promise, will never be devalued. The promises of God always come to fruition at the right time. I've gone over one minute. Can I get, thank you, Jesus? <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. If there is anyone here that has not made that commitment, just to simply say, Lord, come into my life. Forgive me of my stubborn will. And Lord, I receive your promise of eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ. It is simple as that, my beloved. May the Holy Spirit guide you into the truth of his word. God bless you.